This podcast is proudly brought to you in part by our wizards on Patreon. If you would like to support positive content, hop on over to patreon.com slash Miss Mary Lou. That's patreon.com slash Miss Mary Lou. Fall seven times and stand up eight. Japanese proverb. This is just a really lovely way of putting, you know, the classic don't give up, keep going, etc. But what I like about it is that it acknowledges that you're gonna fail, you're gonna fall, things are gonna happen that you can't control. Um, and then, but it also says like, you can get up that eighth time and that can make a difference. Obviously interpreting this in a very literal sense, you're not going to like literally fail only seven times, but I think it's an important reminder that all you need to do is to just keep trying that extra time, keep standing up and like, you can make it happen. Granted, it's not easy. Most definitely but it can be worth it if it's something you are super passionate about. Okay, friends? <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Positivity. This is the Feel Good Podcast where we bring you good vibes by the phoneful. I am your host, Miss Mary Lou Ryan, and I'm so excited to be back in your ears if you're listening or if you are on YouTube. We are a video as well, so hello, friends. How's it going? Um, I wanted to say thank you. I've been getting a lot of really awesome feedback on the podcast lately, and my tea collection sold out again, and that's all thanks to you listeners. So y'all are being rock stars. I really, really appreciate the support. And, you know, I'm not going to waste any time here. Uh, the tea I'm drinking today is delicious, and I'm drinking it for, like, a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it's an English breakfast, and... My dear Monty McKinnon, who I talked about a couple of weeks ago as our good news, the wonderful um, woodworking master of acoustic guitar making Canadian wonderful human on YouTube, he gave me a little shout out and he gave this podcast, friends, a little shout out on his show. He is so delightful and his favorite beverage pretty much probably of all time, is English breakfast. It's at least one of his regular go-tos, which I am just, I, I was, I squealed when he was like, oh, and this is from Miss Mary Lou. You should check out her podcast. And I'm like, ah, Monty. Uh, so yeah, in honor of Monty, I'm having some English breakfast. And also, um, I will bring this up. So I met some really awesome people at VidCon. I, I didn't really want to go into everybody or really anybody that I met because I did, I wanted to respect their privacy, you know, because I, I made real friends. And the point of it was not to like brag about who I saw or who I'm friends with now. It just it feels kind of weird to me when you're trying to like, you know, have a genuine friendship with somebody. However, the Super Carlin brothers did send me their tea. They sent me both of their teas and a sticker. If you don't know the Super Carlin brothers, they are a nerd brother duo on YouTube. They talk a lot about Harry Potter and movies and all the things. And they're both really delightful, intelligent humans. And they sent me their tea, which is so lovely. Carlin Brothers Coffee is the name of the company. They also have coffees. And they sent me their ginger peach, which the last of it is cold brewing in the fridge at the moment and good old English breakfast. So I'm drinking that today and uh, they kind of inspired my self-care experiment this week. So I thought that I would, you know, give them a little shout out if they ever listen to this podcast. I have no idea, but you know, it's nice like wonderful people supporting wonderful people because why not? Cheers to all of you, cheers to Mr. Monty McKinnon and cheers to the Super Carlin brothers. We are in good company, my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's good. 
So last week for my self-care experiment, moving right into our first segment here, I talked about being brave. I live with a lot of anxiety. A lot of it is social anxiety and all sorts of other things. And I had this big convention where I was away from home. I was by myself most of the time. And I just tried to be brave and make friends and talk to other humans and not just hide in, in a corner and... I mean cry because when I have an anxiety attack, that's just kind of what I want to do. I just wish the earth would swallow me, but I did good. I did good friends. And carrying into this week, I have done other things, peppered being brave into other aspects of my life, like not being brave to not be afraid to ask for help. I was really struggling to record an episode this week, an episode I was excited to do. I had all of the pretty B-roll that I spent like hours recording because I just like making tea look so pretty. Um, And all I had to do was just film the talking portion and I'm passionate about the topic. I know what I'm talking about. And I just, it was so hard to just start, to just start. And I was like, you know what, I need help. And I have been having weekly motivational kind of support chats with my friend Kristen from Strolling Through Life. Shout out to you, you wonderful, awesome human. And I was like, you know what, I think I need some help. And I messaged her and I was like, hey, I need to film this and it's really hard. And she was kind of like, just start with this, reminding me of other self-care experiments we've done in the past where you just take things one step at a time. She's like, just focus on setting things up. Then just focus on getting the tea out. Then record it and see what happens. Uh, And my plan was actually to just record the episode that night and edit it the next morning. And I was so into it as I knew I would be. Um, by the end of it that I just recorded it and edited the whole freaking thing. I was like feeling it. I was working like fire and I just, (laughs) I was like, well, you know, I'm feeling it. I'm not going to stop now. Let's just keep going. And I did the whole thing, like starting by putting on makeup and having it exported on YouTube. It only took like four hours, which is amazing. And it was because I realized there was this thing I wanted to get done. I knew I wanted to get done. I was just struggling, but I was brave. I was brave, friends. And I asked for help and I did it. So that's very nice. So yeah, trying to be, trying to be brave, trying to, trying to do the thing. Yes. And then for this week's self-care experiment, it's a concept that I have been trying to live by for a while, but actually putting it into words recently just kind of made it that much more real and made me more aware of it. You know, sometimes when you can put a name on something, it can sort of make it materialize in your brain and all that kind of stuff. And that is own your awkward own your awkward. I, you know, am, I feel I am an awkward human a lot of the time. (laughs) And, you know, I have my anxieties and other things that can just make me like hyper self-conscious of my surroundings, hyper self-conscious of how other people are maybe interpreting my interaction based on body language, etc. And that hyper awareness can kind of, you know, get in the way a little bit. (laughs) But I've been trying lately to just own my awkward. I'm acknowledging like, yeah, I'm kind of anxious and awkward sometimes, and I don't necessarily know the right thing to say. I mean, who does? Um, But just recognizing that being an awkward human, you know, it's kind of my thing. I'm 
flappity muppet person. And instead of trying to hide that from people, I just like flail around and do funny voices. It's just, it's just a thing. And I'm trying not to be as self-conscious about it and just trying to be myself and own it. Own your awkward. And the reason why uh, the Super Carlin Brothers tie into this is I just kind of spit out catchphrases and make up jingles about life as it happens. It's just a thing. If you've ever watched my show, there is at least one jingle in every episode. <laughs> it's just a thing. And you know, I was talking to them having a lovely time just being myself. And I just kind of brought up the idea of owning your awkward. And they were like, oh my gosh, that is the perfect way of putting it. You should talk about this more. Own your awkward. So thank you, Supergon Brothers, for motivating me to really take a closer look at exactly what this is. Because, you know, I like I said, I spit out things all the time. And just acknowledging that and causing me to have that moment of reflection and to really think about what that is, what it means, how I've been trying to apply it, how I can continue to apply it in my life. Because I gotta say, since I started owning my awkward, it has been a lot easier for me to like meet people once I can actually get myself in the situation. Like that's the hard part right now is consciously putting myself in a situation to socialize with other humans, potentially ones that I do not know. And once I'm there, it's like, I'm, I'm an awkward person. I'm just going to own it. And if they don't like me, that's okay. Because this is the me they'll eventually get to know. And I, I don't know, save in a couple of steps. And honestly, humans just like genuinely connecting with other humans. That's what I have found. Um, in general, whether it's in everyday life or at VidCon or wherever it happens to be, it just, it relieves a bit of pressure. And then harnessing that power of being an awkward human. Own your awkward. Just try it. Try it. If you do try it, I would love, love, love to hear what that's like all about for you. Share your stories and your good things. Own your awkward, my friends. Own it because it's gig, it's great. Awkward humans are awesome, and I'm friends with lots of awkward humans. So, yes, go team. Own your awkward. Community news. <sighs> <laughs> Welcome back to Community News. This is the part of the podcast where we celebrate good news from you, the listeners. I hop onto my social media every week at Miss Mary Lou and ask you for anything good that happened to you in the last like seven-ish days. And then I give you a little shout out and celebrate your general awesomeness. Heck yeah. So we are going to launch right into it on Instagram. This is from Shinova Weirdo, and she said it was her birthday weekend and was so fun. And her new single, Bubble, is coming out in eight days. Oh my goodness, you're a musical wizard. Uh, I have mentioned my friend Shinova on the podcast a while ago. She is just a spectacular human, my purple haired pop star friend. And she's fab. And she has been cranking out singles like it is nobody's freaking business. So her new single, Bubble, which I have heard it, it's freaking amazing. Just like everything else this, this woman like touches. She just like creates unicorn galaxies and rainbows everywhere she goes. Bubble comes out on August 8th, 2019. So mark your calendars. If you don't know Shinova Weirdo, look her up on Spotify, on the, on the YouTubes. Um, she's genuinely a really spectacular human being. And I legit met her in the pharmacy line at a Walgreens. <laughs> and 
I overheard her and a friend talking about tea and I was just like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but are you talking about tea? That's just one of those minutes where I, you know, owned my awkward and I freaking made an awesome friend. So Nova, my love, I am so freaking proud of you. You are going after your freaking dreams, doing what you love. Blah! It makes me so happy when like people embrace what they're what they're born to do, and then they do it. And uh, Shinova, girl, you are one of those humans. So thank you so much for continuing to be inspiring. And go check out Bubble on August eighth, twenty nineteen. Heck yeah! Our next bit of community news is still from Instagram, and this is from Lance YG. And he says, I'm trying out pole dancing as a part of my self-care and self-empowerment routine. You go, Lance. You are a magical, acrobatic, stunning, poised wizard. That might be the longest wizard title to date. <laughs> Lance is a longtime supporter of the channel. Thank you so much for continuing to just be your wonderful self and to like let me know that you appreciate what's happening over here on the internet. Lance, you're wonderful and I am so proud of you. Okay, first of all, uh, pole dancing is really, really excellent exercise. You have to have a combination of strength and flexibility. And it's kind of, you know, allowing yourself to own just your general presence and be spectacular. And I agree, definitely a self-empowerment routine. So it's kind of like a two-in-one sort of deal. You're getting awesome exercise, flexibility training. You're getting a heck of a workout and heck yeah, it makes you feel good. I'm so happy for you. Good for you for going out on a limb and doing something that you feel is empowering and you get in a heck of a workout. You're a wizard. And then last we are going over to Tawita. This is from Lazy Literus, and he says, I finalized plans for my first ever trip to Chicago in the fall for a tea festival of all things. For those of you that don't know, Jeffrey, who runs the Lazy Literus accounts on the interwebs and writes the Steep Stories blog, he is a like wonderful tea person with a fantastic palette, super loves it. I see him going to like tea conventions and posting things. I even saw that he posted a YouTube video recently. You freaking go, Jeffrey. And you've never been to Chicago for it. You knew that you wanted to do a thing. You've never done it before? So heck yeah, you bought that tickets to get on that plane to go do what you want to do in Chicago. I, I have to say, I can't wait to see all of your photos and tea posts about the happening. So you're a tea wizard. Yes, Jeffrey. Congratulations. I know it can be really daunting sometimes to leave the familiar and whatnot, but you're going for it. You're going for it. You're doing great. You're doing so great. You're a wizard. Good news, everyone. It's good news. Welcome to our next segment of the podcast, where every week I dive into the depths of the interwebs to try to find a good news story for you. Again, it is important to stay informed with the happenings of the world, but it is also not good to have it keep you from being a functioning human being. So I, I'm here for a little bit of cheer in your cuppa, a little smile in your day, because you know, that's important as well. And boy, this article that I have this week, it's been going around the internet for a few days now, and it's, it's just a feel, it's just a feel good story. No scientific studies or anything like I like to do. We're talking about puppies this week. <laughs> this news article from mysanantonio.com is called Puppies Named After Taco Bell Menu Items Looking for Homes. That's a lot to absorb. There are puppies and they're named after Taco Bell items and they're up for adoption. 
just to reiterate that title, because I know it's, it's a lot of really exciting things in one thing. So yeah, very exciting. Allie Turley Young rescued a terrier pup that was in line at the kill shelter to be put down. And Allie rescued this doggo and, and brought this little terrier home. The dog, they decided to name the dog Taco Bell because I, why not? Taco Bell can be a great freaking name for a dog. And I'm just picturing like a little fuzzy terrier, excited little puppy, just be like Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Like that's, that's delightful in and of itself. Well, it turns out um, Taco Bell was pregnant <laughs> and the owner had no idea. So Taco Bell gave birth to a litter of terrier puppies. So naturally, the mother being named Taco Bell, what else to name the puppies but items off of the Taco Bell menu, <laughs> right? Naturally, that's the only course of action, and boy, did they ever. So the eight surviving puppies from the litter are named. Are you ready for this? Just imagine the puppy that goes with each of these names. <laughs> Cinnamon Twist, Crunchwrap Supreme, Doritos Loco, Quesarito, Gordita, Chalupa, Bel Grande, and Fiesta Potato. Yes, Fiesta Potato the puppy. <laughs> Uh, naturally, the internet caught wind of this and the post did go viral and a few of the puppies did get adopted, which is just wonderful. However, I, I felt the need as of yesterday. I wanted to let you know that Cinnamon Twist, Dorito Loco, Gordita, and Bella Grande, and Crunchwrap Supreme, can't forget Crunchwrap Supreme puppy, are all up for a adoption. I'm going to link the article down below in the show notes, of course. And you know, if you would like a puppy named at any of these delightful menu items, um, if you, of course, think you're ready for a dog and everything, you know, consider adopting one of the sons or daughters of Taco Bell. Literally. <laughs> I always like once in a while to just kind of step back and talk about something that is just feel good. And, you know, it may seem very silly. And you know what? It is. And I think it is important to make room for silliness in your day, right? And I mean, if you have a pet that doesn't have a name, I would highly consider Fiesta Potato uh, because... Why wouldn't you want a doggo named Fiesta Potato? <laughs> Good for Allie for rescuing Taco Bell from the shelter, birthing the puppies, and then using this, I mean, flat out brilliant, like, naming marketing strategy to help get these dogs adopted. It's like a win-win, win-win-win situation. All right, friends, I am going to, you know, wrap up the podcast here. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Thank you again uh, to Monty. If you haven't checked out Monty McKinnon on YouTube, what are you doing? Uh, he's just such a delightful human. And to the Super Carlin Brothers as well. Thank you for being so human and welcoming and your wonderful nerdy selves. I it, it was simply a delight meeting you and your team. And they have the most wonderful team. I gotta say. Shout out to you, Derek and Jordan. Thank you for also being such awesome humans. Awesome humans supporting awesome humans. I hope something I talked about today inspired you or at least made you smile. If you try any of these self-care experiments or do you have a dog named after a Taco Bell menu item? I don't know. Feel free to reach out on social media at Miss Mary Lou at any time. I always love, love hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Own your awkward, my friends. And I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you on Thursday.
This podcast is lovingly produced, directed, written, and created by yours truly, Miss Mary Lou Ryan. Our music was composed and performed by Jacob Kahn. Our logo designed by Hilda Meyer Post. And if you'd like to spread a little positivity into the universe, I would love wherever you are tea partying with us to spread the words with those who could use a little cheer in their cuppa. Thank you so, so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. 